Good morning, everyone. Welcome along to day three of the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. I'm Mark Soderstrom, and yesterday's action saw the continuation of the long-time rivalry in the Clipsal and Schneider Electric Challenger class between frontrunners Nuon Solar and Tokai University, who actually started the day in third spot. Both of these teams kicked off today with a comfortable time advantage over Team Twente and the rest of the field. Things are also tight in the Michelin Cruiser class. Powercore Sun Cruiser and Team Eindhoven are vying for line honours, with University of New South Wales rounding out the top three. And finally, Aurora Evolution continues its vice-like grip on the GoPro Adventure class. Tracy Cotsia caught up with Team Aurora as they arrived at the control stop in Tennant Creek. Looking around, there's no other Adventure class cars here at Tennant Creek. How does it feel to be mixing it up amongst the Challenger class? It's a good feeling. Uh, I think we are. We could be uh, quite an annoyance to them, I guess, because uh, we might be a little bit in the way. We're not in front of the faster ones yet, but uh, who knows, the ones behind us change their strategy and they might, we might be in the way. But yeah, we have to give way to them. But it's very nice to, to be in the middle of the, the new class with just a six-year-old car. There's been great weather conditions since the event began. How's your energy capture been? Uh, it's pretty good. I've, I, I'm not following the telemetry, that's somebody else, but uh, I've been keeping track of the monitor over here. We actually seem that the, the new trackers we're running maybe actually get more than we got two years ago, so that's very good. Do you power solely by the sun or do you get to recharge from the mains electricity when you get to Alice? Uh, I think at this point we have uh, uh, driven very neutral, uh, a little bit uh, taking out of the battery. Um, that, because in Alice we will be staying for longer, we can actually uh, afford to use some of the battery so we have, because we have much more charging in, uh, in Alice Springs. So that'll change your tactics leaving here, won't it? You'll, you'll be able to go to empty almost by the time you get to Alice, is that correct? Um, well, you have to take into account how long you're staying in Alice and when you have to leave again. But uh, yeah, it, it looks like that we can almost empty the battery until Alice. Uh, we have to see because uh, we, we're driving a little bit conservative uh, since the last control stop, but uh, if we really have good weather over there, we, can, might, we might be even go faster than we did coming here. Of course, technology plays a huge part in the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge, and that technology continues to evolve each year. Telemetry is a key feature of that, as Tracy Kotsia found out. Telemetry is vital to the teams taking part in the World Solar Challenge, and it informs many of their strategic decisions. We found out how. Telemetry really has a couple of different, uh, different roles when you're running the car. One of those roles is as a, a source of information for strategy and the purpose is to build up a model of the car so that you can simulate and, and simulate the car as it goes down the event. So feeding that, those simulations is, is all important and really what you're measuring is how much power is the car using, how fast is it going, where in the event is it. Um, you're measuring temperatures because that affects how the solar array performs. You're measuring pressure, the air pressure, to work out how fast you're climbing and how fast you're descending because that changes how much um, power the car actually should be using. So all of these things will feed into a simulation and, and allow you to build up a, an idea of how the car is performing and then how it will perform for the rest of the event. The other, the other thing that telemetry does is lets you work out whether the car is actually performing correctly. And the teams will have um, a network of computers inside, inside the car and all of the different devices, the motor controllers, um, the controllers which run the, um, the solar panels, which are called maximum power point trackers. Um, these will all be connected up in, in a computer network generally in these solar cars. The technology involved with collecting this data is certainly very impressive. With so much information available, analysing and using all of it is next to impossible for the driver alone. Thankfully, the drivers are supported by a control car and a team strategist. The car is gathering a lot of that information itself. Uh, then all of that data has to come together in the one place to be analysed by the team strategist. Uh, that data is coming into uh, a car which is sometimes called mission control. Uh, sitting there will be the, the, the mission director or the team director, plus possibly others as well. And they will all be working on the data together uh, and quite often they will be actually controlling the car. They will be switching solar panels on and off, uh, optimizing uh, battery management. Uh, if something fails in the car, which quite often they do, so say a solar panel stops working, the, uh, the mission director can actually rewire the car so that all the driver has to do is sit there and steer safely. So there you have it. It's pretty clear that telemetry has become a crucial part of the event and plays an undeniable role in getting the cars through to the finish line. 
So how would a team fare without these systems? I think in the very early days, uh, a very good team who had a lot of very good luck uh, may have been able to win without telemetry. Uh, but these days, uh, not a hope in hell. And some news just in from the road. Unfortunately, we've had a couple of withdrawals. Car 80, the Chinese entrance Sun Shuttle, has had to pull out with cell failure. And a battery fire has ended the campaign for Taiwan's Apollo solar car team. In some better news, yesterday's problems for the University of Minnesota have simply been put down to them running out of charge when they were 18 kilometres short of Tennant Creek. They're back on track today and great to see them in the mix. Make sure you join us later in the evening as we recap all the action from day three. In the meantime, you can follow the progress of all your favourite teams on our website through the Coats Hire Car Tracker and the Citizen Timing Board. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later tonight.